Testing, testing. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Cool. Let's go. Whew, what a week it's been. Truly. I'm Alex. And I'm Emily. And welcome to What a Week. You want it, we got it. We're bringing you the top internet culture stories you need to be in the know. Let's dive right in. Okay, so this week's episode, we're focusing on Elliot Page. The Oscar-nominated actor announced he is transgender on Tuesday when they posted a public letter on social media. Their letter said in part, quote, Hi friends, I just want to share with you that I am trans. My pronouns are he, they, and my name is Elliot. I feel lucky to be writing this, to be here, to have arrived in this place in my life. Elliot is known for their lead role in Juno, as well as roles in Inception, the X-Men series, Umbrella Academy, and more. Elliot's announcement received a lot of praise from the world, including the organization GLAAD, who said, quote, Elliot Page has given us fantastic characters on screen and has been an outspoken advocate for all LGBTQ people. He will now be an inspiration to countless trans and non-binary people. All transgender people deserve the chance to be ourselves and to be accepted for who we are. We celebrate the remarkable Elliot Page today. In his social media post, Elliot asked for patience. He said, quote, my joy is real, but it is also fragile. The truth is, despite feeling profoundly happy right now and knowing how much privilege I carry, I'm also scared. I'm scared of the invasiveness, the hate, the jokes, and violence. According to GLAAD, 2020 was the deadliest year on record for the transgender and gender nonconforming community. At least 37 transgender and gender nonconforming people were violently killed in the United States. This is more than any other year since the human rights campaign started tracking this data in 2013. There have been more than 200 deaths since 2013. Elliot revealing he is transgender is huge for the transgender community. He now joins several celebrities like Caitlyn Jenner, Laverne Cox, and Chaz Bono, who have said they are transgender. To talk more about the impact that public figures coming out has on the trans community, we're joined today by trans advocating therapist and educator, Van Ethan Levy. Thank you so, so much for joining us, Van. As a therapist, your goal is to help provide education to create safer and more affirming spaces. And you're also the author of an interactive book called Exploring My Identities. Can you tell us a little bit more about who you are and your work as a therapist and an educator? Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Van, pronouns they, them. I'm a trans and non-binary person. Uh, I was assigned female at birth. I'm a mental health therapist locally in San Diego, but I've been doing a lot of like organizing advocacy uh, and education since, I don't know, maybe as early as um, maybe 10, 11 years old. Uh, without necessarily having the same kind of language and understanding that I do now. Um, and I realized that I consistently have the same conversations over and over, and by conversations I even mean arguments around people not understanding or denying that <clears throat> my identity along with many others are a reality. And it really showed me that it's so deeply rooted in our internalized transphobia that 100% of us have, and we will always have it. The only way to continue to work through it is to be to continuously challenge it and become aware of it. So I wrote an interactive book designed for everybody, not just for the trans or non-binary community, also for the cisgender community. And so people don't know what cisgendered means. That means that your identity uh, is aligned with what you were assigned at birth. So if somebody assigned you female at birth and your, and your identity is female, then you are cisgendered. And so this book is designed to interactively help you explore your own identity from within and help you cultivate an awareness of your own internalized transphobia and cultivate like your own tools that work for you so that you can help address and eradicate this along with helping you develop tools so that you can help educate others so that we can create safer and more affirming spaces for others but also more importantly for ourselves as well because even as cis people there are a lot of boxes that we're forced into that don't allow us to be our authentic self because it's too masculine or too feminine or too this or too that versus just allowing us to be free with, uh, to be ourselves. I guess in terms of media, and we'll kind of get into that in a little bit, but in terms of how people talk about the trans community and how people talk about, you know, the non-binary community, how has you, how have you seen that change since you were younger doing this kind of advocacy? 
So I can only speak from my, my experience uh, and from my region and, and the society and, and areas that I grew up in. And so growing up, I grew up where there wasn't any information. I was very ostracized and isolated and it was treated as a mental illness. Uh, in fact, I spent from about 12 or 13 years old until about 17 years old in multiple different uh, like conversion camps, psychiatric hospitals, treatment centers, residential group homes, like all these different places constantly being shifted around to, to cure me of my transness and my queerness. Um, and so it wasn't like through the, these different programs and meeting different people who had shared or similar identities, was I able to kind of develop language, uh, but it wasn't until, um, I don't know, maybe when I was 17 or 18 years old where I actually was able to um, learn more about these different identities, but it was still very much hush-hush. It was very much once you can appear the gender that you want to be, then you never talk about it again. Um, and so, which is part of that internalized transphobia. If I can then appear male, then I am male, and therefore I was never trans, and we never talk about me being trans. Um, and the, the, the identities of like non-binary and many other identities were so unfamiliar with me. And so it was like either I didn't, I, I didn't feel female, but I felt more what people might label as masculine. And so that might be maybe who I am versus the reality is I am just who I am and, and finding and learning more about what it means outside of the binary felt more right for me. Exactly. And so what impact do celebrities like Elliot Page have at, on the trans community when they come out or Caitlyn Jenner, et cetera? So there's a lot of different answers to that. So first of all, it's really important for us to have role models who have shared identities, who look like us, who we have somebody to look up to to see, hey, there's maybe hope for me. Because typically trans and non-binary people are depicted as sex workers, murdered, perverts, like all these different negative connotations without much hope attached to it. And so it's really important that we have people in positions of power who are in the spotlight, um, so that we can look up to. It's also important that the work that they're doing and the advocacy for our community uh, is um, held to a certain accountability where they're able mm -hmm. to address their own internalized transphobias and micro and macro aggression. Again, like more recently, like, like you mentioned, Elliot has come out at, I believe, 33 years old. It, it's taken somebody who has shared different parts of their, their identity, um, yet still did not feel safe enough to come and share mm -hmm. uh, who they are. And then when we look at folks like um, uh, Caitlyn Jenner's, there's a lot of transphobic micro macro aggressions that she engages in that she's not aware of because I, I don't think that she would intentionally uh, impact uh, or, or yeah cause harm to our community intentionally, or at least I would hope not. And it's, it's all stemmed from, again, those internalized transphobias that all of us hold and that are unaware of. So it's really important that we do have people in positions of power and in spotlight mm -hmm who are able to live their authentic self, not just for our community, but for themselves. We all deserve to be happy and, and authentic with ourselves. And we can't just look at one trans person or multiple trans people who they have a spotlight on and expect that trans people are a monolith, that we're all going to be the same. And that just because this is right for this person or the language that that person is using means that it's okay for everyone else to apply to the rest of the community. Definitely. How have you seen representation of the trans community in media change in recent years? So that's a really hard question for me to answer because I, I haven't been exposed to too much representation of, of trans and non-binary folks in the, in the media and the community. Again, most of the time I'm still seeing a, a lot of uh, trans people who are uh, depicted as sex workers who attempt suicide, who um, are abused and then blamed that the violence that they experienced was because they were trans or they shouldn't have sh told anybody. Uh, so it, like, I'm still seeing a lot of negative connotation to it. Um, yes, there is still like a lot of support. People are, are proud that people came out. But when we think about like pride and people being brave, those are all choices that people get to make and people equate being trans as a choice and it's not, you're just being yourself. So I'm, I'm not brave being who I am. If I saw uh, a dog in a burning building and I ran in to get it, I would be brave because I chose to get that dog. Me living my authentic self is me being strong, but I'm not being brave. Uh, there's not really a choice in who I am. I am who I am and I'm showing up in the world as it is. You might see it as brave because it might seem hard for, for you and it is hard. It's very, very hard for me. And I'm just being strong. I'm not being brave. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That makes Definitely. total sense. 
And so what change do you hope to see in the future when it comes to media representation? You kind of mentioned on this before in the previous question, but what do you hope happens in the next, let's say, five years? I think it'd be really great if, especially these people who are in the spotlight in these positions of power are really calling people to action to address their own internalized transphobia, uh, to really do the work on themselves and to help challenge the people in their lives. When, when, we're not, when we're not addressing the transphobia that we're hearing from others, especially within our own families, if it's safe enough to do so, then we're part of the problem. Being complicit and complacent is part of the problem. Um, an ableist term that's often used is silence is violence. Uh, obviously, if you're in a situation where harm can come to you, it might be best for you to not engage. But if, if it's at a family dinner or um, a situation with friends where maybe they might disagree with you uh, and there might be the risk of a loss of a friendship, um, prioritizing human rights to me is more important than potentially that friendship. Definitely. So I, I'd really love to see the celebrities really doing their own internal work and helping and calling people to do that work as well. Yeah. Definitely. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us. This was such good information. Where can people find your work? So I, I'm still trying to develop a website. Right now on Facebook, I have a, a Facebook page. That's not my personal page um, that I, I can share the link with you. It's called the, the Trans Advocating Therapist and Educator. Um, I also have some articles published on Therapy Route. I'm trying to get some published on Affirmative Couch, the, the book on Amazon. People can feel free to reach out to me. I also have a Google um, document that I've created for all the states in the United States where therapists, doctors, um, psychiatrists have agreed to provide letters uh, for wow. hormones therapy uh, on the first session. So this way there's not a lot of gatekeeping. I'm really trying to expand that. So I'd also like other people to come forward to be on that list so that they can provide uh, trans non-binary people in general with letters to have uh, affirmation surgeries uh, and procedures uh, and hormones that they want or need. Um, and, and I also, my, um, my email is, is available online and everywhere. I, I try to be as reachable as possible. So if people want to connect, want to do that learning that they have ways to do so. The work you're awesome. doing is absolutely amazing. And we're going to make sure to link everything below in our description and put every, everything on Instagram. So thank you so much for joining us and for everything you're doing. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here and giving me this space. Of yes, course. of course. Thank you. And now for our good news of the week. So Alex, why don't we start with you? Okay, so uh, I mean, like in my personal life, not much is happening, but I have been rewatching Gilmore Girls. And honestly, like I forgot how incredible it is. It's so it's good. It's so <laughs> good. Like just like the writing, like the jokes, like it's like a drama, but it's funny, but it's like, it's like everything. It's so good. But my thing is like, I, my first re watch, which was earlier in college probably, so maybe like a 2015 around then, I know I loved Jess. And I'm You're like obsessed. still at the part, yeah, like, and I'm still at the part right now where it's like right before Rory goes to college. Oh, and like, oh, I hate man. Jess right now. See, I'm just like, ew, like she has bad taste, right? He yeah, he sucks. He sucks. Like they all suck. Like Dean. Dean. Oh my God, Dean's the worst. Dean's what? like- He's such a nice guy. Did I miss something when he's on? Guys, yes, you need to rewatch. He's so awful. He's like aggressive and he like yells what? at Rory. He punched oh, I Jess. Remember that, actually, like, I do remember that. Okay, it's been a really long time since I watched it. Maybe my really favorite <laughs> is is Lane's boyfriend, Dave Rogalski. You mean Seth is Cohen? Really <laughs> no. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> he's I love him I'm obsessed with him I remember loving him when I first watched like he's just like kind of that like nerdy but like cool but like cute but like nice like I like that that's my kind of guy I just love the actor who plays him Adam Brody he's married to Leighton Meester from Gossip Girl I just like love him as a human being not that I know him but I'm just like oh you're just like amazing and you're married to Blair Waldorf like oh I know it's like an early 2000s dream I love them yeah like, oh. and not to like get off topic too much but the the uh creator of the OC which is where um Andy where he played Seth Cohen mm -hmm. is also the creator of Gossip Girl oh I didn't know that yeah oh. which is why in the season finale of Gossip or the series finale of Gossip Girl Rachel Bilson is in it for like 
two seconds. And oh. it's because like she knows the creators of the show because they also created the OC. Wait, that's funny. I did not know this. Anyways, the more you know. <laughs> What's your good news of the week? Um, I feel like this was a really good week for my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, my best friend got a job. My best friend's sister got a new job. Oh my gosh. Um, my old college roommate, Chloe, got promoted from part-time to full-time, but it was like, she thought it was going to be like, just for like a couple of months while somebody was on maternity leave. And then they told her, no, it's full-time permanent. Oh, that's awesome. And so, and she like loves her job. So I'm just like, all these good vibes, like, mm-hmm. yes. Yes, <laughs> so, I love it. Loving it. <laughs> um, and we're gonna read some of your good news of the week. So Dominique Vitti says her dog who has arthritis went on a longer walk without tripping or falling. That's great. That's really That's nice. Dog. <laughs> Ori said had a panic attack, but am now watching Silicon Valley and finished all my assignments. See the silver linings. I love that. I had a panic attack. Was it this week? It might have been last week. And then I watched Gilmore Girls after. So I, I feel better. Totally feel that. You feel yeah. You feel great after. <laughs> yeah. Um. Kristen Rivas said she got a new job, and she's my best friend, who I mentioned two seconds ago. So yay, yes. Kristen. Jocelyn said didn't get COVID, which is a great to celebrate. Love that. Love that for you. <laughs> And Mercy said she's on vacation. Yay! Yay. And happy <laughs> late birthday, Mercy. Oh, happy late birthday. And that's it. That's all the good news we've got right now. Yes. This has been such a fun episode to do. Um, thank you all for listening, as always. Yeah, we hope you learned something new in this episode. And don't forget to follow us on our socials. You can follow along and watch the whole show on YouTube. You can just search What a Week with Alex and Emily, or you can, if you really love us so much, you want to go the extra mile, you can be a Patreon for us. The link yes. is in our YouTube description or in our, and in our link tree on Instagram, or you can follow us on TikTok. We promise we're going to start posting more. <laughs> it's What a Week Show yes. underscore. <laughs> yes. And on Twitter, we are also What a Week Show underscore. On Instagram, we're What a Week sh- Show. And if you want to leave us a review on wherever you're listening to your podcast, go do that. Five stars, hopefully. You know it. (laughs) Yeah, that does it all for us. We'll catch you again next week. Have a wonderful week, y'all. Yes. Woo! See you later. Bye. Bye.